everyone now in this video we'll create a family that is ceiling base so let's go ahead and create a new family so first we'll do is we will make a generic joist that is wooden joist let's go ahead and select a generic model we are not selecting a ceiling base we are just selecting a generic model so click open and what we'll do is we'll create a joist and then we'll use that joist to create a new family so in this case let's go ahead and create a framework for the joist, let's pick line, let's pick with uh, 2 inches offset, thickness of the joist and then let's create 3 feet offset for the length, so one side length and on the other side length, ok. Let's go ahead and create those parameters, so annotate and let's first equalize it and let's give a dimension here, let's equalize over here. And then create an overall dimension. Let's parameterize this and let's call it a thickness. Thickness. And then let's parameterize the same. And let's call it length. Okay. So we created these two parameters. Let's create a shape. Okay. So let's go to create extrusion. Let's pick line and let's pick these four lines that define its shape. Let's extend to corner. Make sure extrusion starts from one zero and let's go to negative six inches. So that's downward. Let's click yes. Uh, let's check it in the back view or front view. This looks good. And let's go ahead and in dimension, it's let's dimension the depth of the choice and let's call this the depth. Click OK. So let's make sure that it's working everything. So let's select a different depth here. Let's make it 8 inches and click apply. It's working. That's fine. Let's go to reference level and let's try to change other things and see if it is working. So let's go ahead and make it 8 feet and let's make the thickness 6 inches, click apply, click ok, it's working here. Um, we are not seeing that choice because the reference level, it's below the reference level. So we can go ahead and check in the 3D view. So this is 3D view and now try to change to 10 feet. To apply it's working and let's change back from 6 inches to 4 inches the thickness it's working all right so once that is working let's go ahead and create a material parameter so go here and let's create a new parameter and let's call it material material let's put it in the common discipline but under the type parameter of material Click OK, OK, click OK, click on the joist, come here and from here, let's assign that material. So we have every parameter to control the thickness, the depth and the length and there's a material parameter. Let's save this. So I'm going to save it as joist 2 and save and let's close it. Let's open a new family template using now ceiling base generic. Uh, when this opens, let's go ahead and create a framework of the ceiling. So length and width. So let's go to a reference plane, pick line, and let's create three feet. So here, here, and here, and here. Let's go ahead and dimension it. Equalizing it. And then creating an overall length, equalize, put it here and then overall width. Let's go ahead and parameterize this. Let's call it ceiling length. Click OK. Let's parameterize that one. Call it ceiling width. Click OK. Once that is done, let's go to the 
elevation and let's create a reference plane that is for the suspended height 6 inches click on it ok let's go to hollow date and let's specify this and let's parameterize this as suspended height so what we did we created a framework of the ceiling the length and the width and the suspended height once that is done what we need is we'll bring that joist to that we just created using the generic template and we will insert it over here let's go to insert load family and let's load that family that we just created the joist to joist click open go to create component and let's place it somewhere here it will not be visible because it is gone to the reference level which is of the floor which is at the floor level it's right here so let's do one thing let's first align this to this okay so click on align here top of this so it comes up and let's lock it so what we're doing we're locking the top of this to the suspended height so whenever the suspended height changes it will change the joist level also let's go back to our ceiling plan reference view so let's change the the view range of this ceiling plan view so cut plane is same for 6 inches let's bring the cut plane to a little bit higher or maybe lower feet. click apply click ok so now we can see the joints so let's go ahead and align this to the grid that we just created so let's click on align so what we want is we want this choice the center along its length to be aligned with this so click on the reference plane and then click on the center of the joist and lock it we also want the center along the length of the joist this center to align with this so click on the reference plane and then cover your mouse and when it highlights the center click here and lock it so along the x and y both axes we align this joist and locked it to the center of the ceiling and the center of this reference plane so once that is done let's go ahead and click on the joist and let's click on array so this array will create a set of these joists so click on array right now the number is 2 let's make it 3 so that we have 1 in the center and let's click on the last ok let's array from here to here so what it did it created 3 joists and we'll use this as our basis for parameterizing the number of joists that we want in this formula okay so once this is done i want you to align this so the way we align the first joist to this center and this reference plane we'll do the same for the last one and whatever is in between will follow that so let's go ahead and click on align click on this reference plane and the center of the joist and lock it let's click on this reference plane and then center and lock it okay so we've done that let's uh, hover your mouse and when this array sign shows up click on it and as you can see here there is a number you see that when that number shows up click on that number parameter it's just like a dimension and under this option bar there's a label okay click and drop down and go to add parameter and let's make this number which is right now 3 as number of length joists so we parameterize a number so instead of having 3 we say that let's call that as number of joists along the length so number of length joists let's also go ahead and in this view let's see if it is working let's try to change the suspended height so let's change suspended height to 8 inches click apply and you see it's not working and the reason is we actually the top of this choice is locked to this but when we arrayed it we did not lock the top of the last choice right so we'll have to do it again so let's go ahead and click on align let's align to this reference plane the top of this and lock it now if i go back and change it so let's say it's not 8 inches, let's make it 12 inches. We click apply. Now it's working. 
Okay, so make sure when you lock the first choice horizontally and vertically, same we will do for the last item on the array. Okay, let's go back to our reference view. Okay, and here, so we cannot see that joist, and the reason is because the suspended height is one foot now. So let's bring it back to six inches so we can see it. Apply. Okay, okay, so we did it on one side. Let's go ahead here and let's make sure it's changing. So let's try to change the length to eight feet. Click apply. Yeah, it's working, so it's fine. So let's also create a formula for number of length joists. So let's say you want these joists to have a gap of 20 inches. So what we want, we want to create the number equal to ceiling length. So we want to take the length, make sure the spelling is right and it matches with this parameter. So we want this parameter to be divided by 1 foot 8 inches. So we want this length to be divided by 1 foot 8 inches and whatever number comes, convert that into an integer and that would become the number of length joists. So when I apply, you see it automatically created those many joists. So right now it's 8 feet and 8 feet that means 96 inches divided by 20 inches which is roughly 4 point something. So what it did, it created those four gaps here. So click OK. Let's also, the way we did it here on this side, let's do it on the other side. Let's go back to create component and let's bring in the joist. But before we bring in, let's set it type. And the reason we want to change the, uh, this type, because the type that we use right now, we change its properties. For the new one, we want a new type. So click on it, duplicate, and let's call it joist. 2 B. Okay, click OK and click OK. Component and joist B. Let's hit tab and let's put it here. Okay, I know that we cannot see it. Let's go ahead and give it. Let's go back to our elevation view. This is sitting right here. So let's align it to this level. So align to this reference plane, top of the joist, and lock it. Once that is done, let's go back to our reference plan view and ceiling. Here's the joist. Let's align this centrally on this reference plane and on this. So let's click on align. We want to align to this the center of the joist and lock it. And then we want to align to this reference plane, the center and lock it. Once that is done, let's go to array. Let's click on the joist. Click on array. Make it three items just so that it has one in the center and put it from here to here. Okay, once that is done, let's align and lock this choice also. So click on align, let's click on this reference plane and select the center of the joist and lock it. Let's click on this reference plane and click on center of the joist and lock it. So that's perfect. Let's go ahead and click on modify and when the array highlights, click on it. And let's parameterize this number. Right here, let's click on it, add parameter, and let's make it, let's call it number of width joists. Click OK. So what we did, we parameterized this number of joists along this axis. So let's go back to family type and its parameter. And let's go and create a formula for number of width joists. So let's make it ceiling width. Make sure the spelling is correct and matches. Divide it by 1 foot 8 inches. Click apply. Can you see now it creates those many joists automatically. Let's go back to our elevational view. So let's, let's go ahead and see if it works. So let's try to change the suspended height to 8 inches. Click apply. So you see that when we arrayed we had the first item locked at the top, not the last item. So let's go ahead and lock this. So let's click on align. We want to align to this reference plane, top of this, and lock it. Okay. So now if we go ahead and change it back to four inches, let's say. Click apply. Everything 
should work. So let's go back to our reference level. Now what we want is we want to transfer we want to transfer the original parameters from the original choice family. So the length of these choice, so if I click here, the length of this should come from the ceiling width. So right now the length is not changing. So if you see that the ceiling width is six foot, right? But the length of the joist, the original length of this piece is still controlled by its original family. So what we need to do, we need to come here, hit tab, when it clicks, then go to edit type. So you see the length of this choice is 10 feet. But actually this length should be this. You need to go here and click on length and click here and say, well, assign the length of the joist equal to the ceiling width and click OK. Once you do that it and apply it, it automatically takes that, that size. So you see all the types have changed. Similarly, if I, if I hover my mouse here and hit tab, click on it and edit its type and I say length of this joist should come from the length of the ceiling and click OK and click apply and you see that it has taken that 8 feet and it is applied. Now let's say you want to extend these ends beyond the ceiling width and the length. So for that what we need to do is we need to create two more parameters. Let's go here and let's create two parameters. One new parameter and let's call it extended length okay length parameter dimension common click ok let's create another parameter and let's call it extended width okay click ok and let's give the formula so extended length we want equal to the ceiling length plus because we are dividing it 20 inches and let's say you want this joist to extend beyond by let's say 12 inches. So let's add 2 feet. Okay. Let's copy the same formula and over here. So similarly, we want the extended width to be equal to the width, ceiling width, plus 2 feet. Okay. Click apply and click OK. And now let's go back and hover our mouse and select this choice type and edit types and go here and click on the length again and let's assign this rather than to the ceiling width assign it to extended width click ok click apply as you see now it's extended by 12 inches on both the sides similarly hover your mouse tab select this Edit time and let's assign its length instead of from ceiling length from extended length. Let's click OK and click apply. So if you want something like this, it can be done. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it if it is working properly. So if I change the ceiling length to 10 feet and also ceiling width to 10 feet and apply, click OK. It's working for okay so we see that it's 12 inches extending on both the sides now there's one more thing we have to create and that is let's go to its type create a new parameter and let's call it material okay and it's under material type click ok and over here what we want is Click OK, so go here, edit type, and we see the material parameter right now here. Click here and assign it to this, that the parameter that we created, and click OK. So what it does, it will bring, it will change the material of the original joist based on what we select in this family. So again, we'll do it for this type. Remember, this is different type, edit type. And we want it to be assigned by 
this material can be copied. Okay. So if I go here and under family type, if I select a material, let's say I want to select a, a walnut and click OK, click OK, then it's a walnut. Okay. So if I go to realistic view, as you can see, it's a walnut joist family. If I go in 3D view, I can see that. Okay. So if I click here and check. That's the family that I just created. If I go into realistic view, you can see that it's walnut. Now you can convert this to metal, you can convert this to anything. So let's go ahead and save it. Save. And once it is saved, I can insert it in a project where I have a ceiling. So let's close this. Let's go to a ceiling view. So right here. Let's uh, load that family. Copy. Go to architecture on component and that's the ceiling base family that's right here and see it will only appear at the ceiling because it's a ceiling base okay so let's see let me put it somewhere here that's okay because it has uh, it is at the lower level so let me open this section here okay and as you can see here it's right now it's here now if we if you remember when we tried to insert it it was showing up on the floor okay and the reason if I click on the this family and I click on edit family the reason it was showing on the floor is if I click on the ceiling which is the reference this ceiling is reference to the floor and it is given an offset of 8 feet so that means whenever you insert this family it will be always reference to the floor so instead of having suspended height from reference from ceiling, if you remember we had dimensioned here, what I did was I dimensioned it, I deleted the dimension and I dimensioned it to the floor. And then instead of giving how much it is hanging, I will give an offset. Okay, so if I go to the properties of this type, I can write it. That's okay. If the ceiling is 8 feet, if I want this ceiling to be hanged by 1 foot, suspended height should be 7 feet. So if you do that, it perfectly works. Okay. So if I go to my ceiling plan view, let's say on second floor. Okay. And if I want to insert this again here, it will show. Okay. So let's say if I want to put it here somewhere, click on modify, and then I go here and edit it side. And I duplicate it and I say, hey, make it to be three, two, click OK. And I want to change its length and width and make it make them smaller. So maybe six foot by six foot. Click OK. And now it has changed, and I can now move it around to centralize it. Maybe somewhere here. Okay, so if I go here in this on the second floor and here and if I create a view on this on this corner, let me do this. And now I see that. Okay, so you see then the light and there is ceiling that we just inserted. And there's a similar ceiling in the next room right here. Okay, so if I go to realistic view, I can see that. Okay, so if you see, this is the ceiling that we created. Thanks for watching.